Now, one of my bigger things right now is to get rid of subscription plans. And one of my biggest subscription plans that I have right now is Photoshop or Adobe. So technically I could use Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever it's in its arsenal. And the only program I actually use from its arsenal is Photoshop itself, which is why I'm trying to learn GIMP as much as I can. And, and I am starting to realize how powerful GIMP really is. But my problem with GIMP begins with how I'm so familiar with Photoshop. Now it's one of those phrases where you can't teach old dog new tricks type of thing, where it's like I'm struggling to learn GIMP because it's so different from Photoshop, but honestly, it's really not. To try to make it as similar as I can so it's easier to learn, I decided to modify some of the styling and I am gonna show you some of the plugins that I use to make GIMP very similar to Photoshop. Now to begin, this is how GIMP looks. You got your tools on the left, you got some of your menus on the left, you got some brushes on your right side and your layers menu right over here. All right, jumping into my Windows 11 VM and a real Photoshop session, you could see that we have uh, the tools to the left, colors to the right, some properties in the middle and layers to the bottom right. So we wanna try to get as similar as possible this way, it's easiest for us to learn. So the first thing we need to do is actually create something similar to what we have over here. And I am actually gonna go to this menu to the right and add a tab and we're gonna add color. Now we have something similar to that and we could drag this over to the left. Next we have swatches and then gradient. We don't have swatches in GIMP, so I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna keep the pattern, but also add gradient and get rid of the help menu. So I'm gonna go over here, close this tab, and then I'll leave the font tab because actually we have adjustment layer, which if you were to use fonts, you could actually go over here, but it's really up to you. You don't really need to keep that. Now we have the color gradient we are gonna add gradient here, and then we'll move it right over here. And then we have, actually, gradient goes over here, pattern goes to the end, and we don't have swatches. Let me double check that. Yeah, we don't have any swatches like that. Next, we have another menu down here. So what we're gonna do to have this middle menu button is actually enable it over here. So what we're gonna do is add tab and we're gonna do something called document history. And this is similar to like a file properties, you could say. I'm gonna move that to the beginning. And then also now I'm gonna take this layers and move this down to the bottom where it hits the blue color. You see how it changes color? Now we have two different menus. Now I'm also gonna bring the channels down here and also the paths down here. So now we have the bottom menu similar to the bottom menu we have here. And in the middle, we have document history. And I am also going to bring this fonts. So now we have the right menus looking similar to what we have on Photoshop. Now we're still not done yet because on Photoshop itself, you could see that this has the history and we have something else down here, which is the comments. Now we don't have comments, but we do have history. So what we can do is go back into GIMP, take this. This is actually history. Drag this over to the right side. And now we have the history menu here. Now there's no way to collapse it like how it was in Photoshop, but it's enough for me to understand what I need to do over here. Now from all these other menus that we have, it's up to you if you wanna transfer this over to the menus over here because they're related to color, but you could also close them. So what I'm gonna do is just close this tab, close this tab, and then close this tab as well. Now I could actually shrink this menu down to how Photoshop would look like. So now we have a very, very similar looking style like it is in Photoshop. So if I was to do something like new and make a new document, it'll look similar to that. So it's not bad. Like at least I get the idea, this is the layers now, this is where I will pick my colors and my tools are organized to the left side and I understand where all the tools are. Next thing what you might want to do is actually use Photoshop shortcuts. Now, that was my biggest problem when I'm learning is because Control D in Photoshop is to deselect, while in GIMP, it's Shift Control A. So I was having tons of mix up because of the hotkeys itself, but I actually did not install this hotkey for Photoshop. Even though you can, it's just a matter of copying these four files. If you're using Linux like me, and you're using Flatpak, what we can do is actually, you see how it says configure GIMP.2.x? That's where you would save and paste the data. I can open this and go to a software called Warehouse, open up GIMP and go to user data folder. And in here, there's the config file that it needs. And then you could just config GIMP 2X. In there, you could actually just paste whatever the keyboard would be. So GIMP 
2.10 and then paste it right over here which will be your menu rc profile rc and all this other stuff it will be all in here i purposely didn't do that because i'm actually still trying to learn the keyboard shortcuts where you can go over here and look for it so like if i'm looking for something like select none select all and then select none right here would be shift control a either i could adjust it myself to control d or just learn control shift control a which i did so this way i would know kind of a little bit of gimp and it doesn't bother me too much because i know where all the location is now the next biggest problem between gimp and photoshop is the plugin so if i was to go into text and i was to type in something here and i wanted to have say let's go to background let's create a new layer in the background and we're going to do plugins filter let's see render different clouds so now we have some sort of clouds going on over here I'm going to go to filter blur and I'm just going to make a big blur of not the text. Oops. I got to select the background filter blur blur. And there we have it. So now we have a text and some sort of background. Now, if I wanted to make an outline of the text, I would right click into the layer, go to blending options, head into stroke and I would have my stroke pattern that I need over here and whatever size I want to make it, I could just change it over here. And say like if I want to do, was it five pixels? Yeah, that's fine. Five pixels, that's how it would look in five pixels. Now, to do this same exact thing in GIMP is a lot harder. So say like if I want to go here, I am gonna do filters, render, oh, noise, different clouds. I would have my clouds over here. And then if I want to go to filter, blur, then I could do my blur and hit OK. And say if I want to add some text, I'll go here and do test. Let's make this black. And then we'll make this much bigger so it's easier to tell. There we have our test. And if I want to do a stroke, what I need to do is go over to my layers, right click on this and do alpha to selection. You see how it selects that? Then go to select and then go to grow and I wanna grow four pixels, right? Hit okay, it's gonna grow by four pixels. Make a new layer. Okay, make sure that new layer is underneath that old layer. Let me make this bigger so it's easier. And then take the fill tool, since it's white, I'll just fill that in. And now I could do control shift A to deselect. And now I have my little stroke of that text, which we just did in Photoshop in just a matter of clicks while here I have to do so much more selection. But what if I told you you could do this all through a plugin? So what I'm gonna do now is close this out, quit, discard changes, go into something called the Linux Beaver. And this actually gives you third party GEGL GIMP plugins for GIMP. And I'll leave all the links down in the description below for this. But all you have to do is actually head down to download for Windows here, for Linux, it's this one download for Linux here. Try third party something GL, and it gives you this download. I'm gonna open this download, double click it to extract it, and it's gonna give me a bunch of Linux binaries. It's gonna go like that. I'm gonna hit Control A, Control C to copy. And then now I'm gonna go back to warehouse, go to GIMP, go to user data folder. And in our case, we actually gotta install it into, where is this? We gotta go into data, GLGE, and then plugins. So we're gonna go back into here, data, GLGE, plugins, and then we're gonna paste everything right over here. At this point, you can just close it and reopen GIMP. And now I'm gonna do that same thing. So I'm gonna create a new file, 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna do filters and I'm gonna do render, noise, different clouds. I'm gonna go to filters, blur, and then Throw in a blur over here, okay. Take the font, drop it down here, and I'm gonna do test. And then we're gonna change the font color to black. And then we're gonna make this much bigger so it's easier to see. And then now, all I have to do is go to tools, GLGE operations, and anything that doesn't have a G in front of it is the plugins that we just added. And what we want to do now is actually just use something called classic effect continual layer, this one right here. And from here, if I want to add an outline, just enable it, make sure the outline is white. 
and I could do whatever size I want, say like four pixels like before, hit OK. And there we have our little outline. We could do drop shadows and all that stuff. The tools option with the GLG operations has a lot of stuff that you can play around with that Photoshop actually still doesn't have some of it either. So between making GIMP look like Photoshop with the styling and everything and the tools on the left hand side, uh, you also added the GLG operations, which gave you plugins to actually operate similar to what you would find on Photoshop. What's cool is that those are not the only plugins you could do. There are actual Python plugins and script plugins that you can get that can enable more features on GIMP that you wouldn't even see in Photoshop. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys are locked down like me using Photoshop just because it's easier, you can now start trying to use GIMP and use these plugins similar to what you would find on Photoshop. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And that's Amen Nerd Cave. Hack till it hurts.